All right, so let's say we spent a lot of time making an incredibly boring graphic here um, about the size of the different cities uh, across the United States. So what you'd normally do is you would, you know, file, save for web, you'd save this as a PNG, and then you would have a wonderful uh, PNG right here. So just a normal image file, nothing fancy. The good thing about a PNG, or an image file in general, is it can be shared very easily. The bad side is, though, if I resize it to get smaller and smaller and smaller, you can no longer really read the text. So how many people does Dallas have? If I squint, I can see it's 1.3 million. Uh, but due to the way that, you know, the magic of the internet works these days, we kind of expect no matter what our screen size should be, we should be able to read text, we should be able to interact with the things that we make. So, uh, the New York Times, they're heroes, um, they saved the day, they made a tool called ai to html you can find it at ai to htmlorg um, What it does is it takes an Illustrator file that you've made, and instead of exporting it as an image file like a PNG, it exports it as a web page, which can have all sorts of magic things happen to it. Uh, so we're going to do, do a tutorial on how to make AI to HTML do what you want AI to HTML to do. So first things first, um, we are going to make a brand new document. So the important thing is here, uh, usually you're probably going to create a new document and units are going to be millimeters down here. We do not want millimeters because this is not for print because this is for the web, we're going to change units to pixels because pixels are what you measure everything on a screen with. Mine is 800 pixels wide, 400 pixels tall. You should probably do the same thing just so we can run into the same sorts of problems. Also, if you go down to advanced, CMYK is also for printing. It's a color mode, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. What we want to do instead is change that to RGB. It's going to yell at you. Um, possibly yell at you. Uh, just ignore that, and then you're going to hit OK. So the two things you want are units, pixels, color mode, RGB, and I guess width and height, same as mine. So we got a brand new file here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to build this map again for you. Uh, I'm just going to cut and paste it into here. So this is a wonderful, wonderful map uh, that we want to turn into HTML, but the first thing we need to do is take the AI to HTML script. It's an add-on to Illustrator and install it into Illustrator. So here's what we do. How to install. Great, the documentation is really good for AI to HTML. Um, it's just sometimes it's better to see it happen. So download the latest version of the script here. I click through, there's a nice big long file here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save it. Uh, and it recommends here you save it into Adobe Illustrator CC, presets, EN, US, scripts, AI to HTML. And you might not know exactly what that means, so we're going we're gonna to walk through that. So what you want to do is save page as. You're going to make sure down here it says format JavaScript. You're going to make sure it does not say HTML down here. It has to be JavaScript. So we are going to go into Applications. We're going to go into... Uh, Adobe Illustrator CC 2015 is mine. You cannot use this script with Adobe Illustrator CS6. It has to be Adobe Illustrator CC, which is Creative Cloud. So we go into here, and then there are some more folders. There's a folder for presets, there's a folder ENUS, and there is a folder for scripts. And now we have all these other files in here. We're going to add AI to HTML to the pile. We're going to hit save. Wonderful. You see down here it got saved. And now it's time to use it. So we have our 800 by six or 800 by 400 page here. Oh, we have to save this first. So what happens is when you run AI to HTML, it saves your HTML file in a subfolder based on where your original file, your Illustrator file, is saved. So we're going to file, save. Uh, I have a folder on my desktop called AI to HTML tutorial. I'm going to call this map.ai. I'm going to just agree to whatever it says. And then I'm going to go to File, Scripts, AI to HTML, little progress bar, and then it's going to say all these magic things. So a settings text block was created to the left of all your artboards. You can use it to customize your output. The image output path folder did not exist, so the folder was created, and your Illustrator file was saved. So we're going to hit OK. Uh, we're going to look over here, and there's a brand new, this is a, a text block that gives a bunch of settings that we're going to go through later. 
But first thing, we'll hop on my desktop. Um, we're going to go to AI2HTML tutorial, and we're going to see that along with the Illustrator file, there is now an AI2HTML output folder. We'll open that up, and now there's a PNG right here. And Oh, you say, I thought there wasn't going to be a PNG. You open it up, there is no text on it. So it looks like AI to HTML really screwed up. Not true. What we're going to do is we're going to open up this math.html file. Ta-da! It looks kind of the same as what we had here. This is the PNG, this is the HTML, this is the PNG, this is the HTML. The magic thing about what AI to HTML does, though, is this text here is actually text. It's text that's overlaid on top of the image. So the image we opened up before is actually the background, and then there's text on top of it. So you can select it and search. I can say New York City. Um, but if we resize it, it always stays the same width. So the real fun thing about AI to HTML um, is not the fact that you can just simply make selectable text. The real fun part is the resizing. So we are going to go back into our uh, AI file, and we're going to scroll over here and look at all of these options we can set for AI to HTML. Uh, there's a link in the description about what responsive design is, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this responsiveness. Right now it's fixed, and fixed means it's always going to be the same width. It's always going to be the same height. No matter what, this here will always be 800 wide by 400 tall. What we want to have happen is when the page gets bigger, we want it to get bigger, and when the page gets smaller, we want it to get smaller. So we're going to change responsiveness from fixed to dynamic. And then we're just going to run the exact same thing again. File, scripts, AI to HTML. I'm going to say your Illustrator file was saved. And we're going to refresh this page right here. And oh, look at that. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. So we do run into a problem when we make it very small in that this text ends up wrapping. Uh, New York City wraps, Los Angeles is going off of the side of the page, um, and we are going to fix that up in just one second.